How are you? <laughs> so again, again, you were ranked. You were the ranker. Let's talk about the environment when you went to your network because the network of the network of Terry is a monster. A vast. <laughs> it's a vast. Terry is the fourth picture Star Trek. He's the fourth Star Wars. If he was on Facebook, he would have ten thousand friends. <laughs> if he's at Fox, he'd be Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, but Terry, you you. Uh, Talk us through your pitch. You say, I want to, one, I want money from you. Two, I want to use your house and your town. And I want your police department to turn the building over to me for a week. And they go, oh, okay, Terry. So let's talk about what is it. You have a, you have a great way of, of finding a project and presenting the value proposition to the community person, people. What is it that, you know, you're hard at us. So when you evaluate something, what do you look for to say this is worth doing and worth putting my relationships on the line? Well, I think the first thing you need to do is take a look at the community that you're thinking about founding and see what it is that they're all about. Understand whether they're manufacturing, or, uh, you know, professional services, uh, whether they're in the tourism business. And uh, we found a community that obviously sitting up in Northeast Iowa, right on the Mississippi River, is very big into tourism, and they were in the process of trying to expand that, you know, and, and uh, so it was a good fit for us because we wanted the, the community that uh, um, that would welcome us, and, and they did with open arms. I think we've talked about that already, so I won't go into that in detail. But, but you know, logically, you have to think about those things before you make the approach. Well, hold on. Let's. I mean, we have some time. Let's talk about a little of that detail. Open arms is, is actually fairly logistical. Even from the standpoint how you arranged for the cast and crew to be fed every day. And let's talk about some of those things because those make a difference. Those kind of things get filtered back to the community at large across the country. Has anyone ever been to McGregor? Have you ever eaten at the Twisted Chicken? <laughs> Twisted Chicken is a. Is a it was. <laughs> it was. It was, yeah. We closed it. Uh, we, uh, we had. We had all of our meals at the Twisted Chicken, which is a gourmet restaurant that's got a cook that is just absolutely out of this world. And never eat any, never seen anything on the menu twice. I mean, we ate there for 18 meals and never ate the same thing twice. And it was just, it was wonderful. And uh, coincidentally, the gal that ran the place uh, spent a long time working for National Geographic as a sound person for a camera. It was her husband. <coughs> And had been all over the whole world and had been around film, so she really enjoyed the relationship. You know? and, uh, so, but you know, you have to look for those kinds of things when you go to places in order to get them to provide for you what it is that you want. You have to think that all through in your head first and how you're going to approach it. And it's the same way when working working with investors to invest in your film. I mean, you have to pick the right people. Not everyone is right for investing in film. have to catch them on a good day, too, but sometimes that's pretty hard to determine. But there's a lot of days where I just pulled up my book and, you know, we're going to carry this conversation on a little bit further the next time. <laughs> it's not going so well. Yeah, but, you know, it, it's a thought process, and you, if you're not selective and pairing your thoughts down to what it is you want to accomplish with someone, uh, you probably are going to have good chances of not getting it. What do they look for? What does the town look for? Mark, you're doing, you were saying you want a location scout and some advising work. The other side, when you present the opportunity to a location or a person, what are they looking for? Do they know what they're looking for? What do they hear? What do they think they hear? Um, well, let me make sure I understand. The, 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 the folks that own the house or the filmmakers that want to use That's the folks that own the house. All right. Well, in this case, the house owner, uh, your very first question was, is it pornography? They drew a line. None of that stuff. Projection or rejection? Yeah, and she's, they're asking the question again when there needed to be a question about uh, some film shot in a bedroom. And so they asked the question again. They just wanted to make sure because there are people from their community that it will get known like that fast as a film in the community. And when it comes out, everyone will know oh, that happened there. Okay. So, 
should, they want to know, and they've got reputations to hold, and that's fine. Uh, they want to know a little bit about what it's about. Uh, they want to know um, not everything. They just need to know the basic. It's a romantic comedy. It's a action movie. It's a whatever. And so they just need a little fill-in. They don't need the whole story. And they want a little excitement in their community and in their lives. That's great. Others, uh, a restaurant where some shooting was going to be done. Also, um, I think both of them, both the restaurant and the home and one other business that we visited, uh, they all are kind of curious, are we supposed to get paid for this or what? <laughs> and in the case of the business, they're gonna lose three days worth of business of regular stuff. And I'm assuming, and I haven't seen any of these contracts, but I would imagine you all take care of them fairly well and, and take care of their regular amount. And some of them, I think other, some of these restaurants actually try and figure out a way to operate and do the business of the film at the same time, and some of them can. So I think that's that's a fairly good example. I think. Yeah. A farmer, you know, just does, don't don't chew up my corn. If you do chew up my corn, I you gotta pay for it. Unless you make a baseball field out of it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're gonna be conventionally famous. That, that's a good segue, Tom. Let's talk about some of those line item pass-through opportunities for vendors and human resources. I mean, how does the, the tax bill sort of affect and support people contributing their resources to a production? Well, um, to kind of turn that just a slight amount in terms of how the program is changing versus uh, these would be the pass-through and, and to kind of give us a little before and after. Previous to today, let's say, it was pretty generous use of the, the ability to uh, subcontract what we're talking pass through. It's that I'm the producer, Becky's the producer, and she's coming to Mark for uh, Griffin Electric Service. And Mark's only got a certain amount of gear, but she says, I trust you, I want your service. Well, he's got to subcontract down the remainder of it and, and has the ability to bring that equipment from wherever it needs to come from. It's irrelevant at that point. <clears throat> and so the, one of the changes that's proposed in, in the program. Is to restrict that because it's you know, quite frankly very easy for uh, uh, a local vendor to provide quite a few services that kind of cut out Terry service and bond service, and so it's you know gradually going towards more of a spe specific pass-through service that's related to the need. So that's creating the opportunity for uh, more companies to be uh, started up or expanded upon uh, to provide those specialty services. You mean so real Iowa spending? Or, yes, exactly, so that we can say that, well, <clears throat> we want somebody, instead of Mark just kind of farming out to work to Chicago and wherever else, Minneapolis, whatever, he can say, well, no, wait, I've got a, a, a larger inventory for you to pick from, so I want you, and I would say, I want you to use that local service instead. So the, what has to precede that is for the infrastructure to be there. If I'm going to impose a restriction on the filmmaker to say you've got to work harder to hire local and you've got to prove to me that you can't get local and we've got to have local there to provide that service. In some of the cases it's, it's pretty well uh, taken care of. The acting is one of the easiest ones to say that no, you don't need to bring in people from LA, we've got a very good deep base of actors here. But in terms of uh, camera equipment and other uh, um, equipment like that, it's very, also very easy to just look at what's in the truck say it's there, it's not there. You just don't have it. But then some of the other labor services, it's harder to say that. And so it's really important for us, to be real clear here, it's important on my side or us on the organizational side to be able to provide the training opportunities. It's hard for you guys as entrepreneurs and as the actual service providers to, to train yourself unless you're getting hired. When you're faced with the chicken and egg problem, and I'm trying to set that aside, if, if at all possible, through our, our program changes and so forth to accommodate that. And that's that's the way the whole program was envisioned in the first place. I mean, ironically speaking, this whole program is for you guys, but we're giving the benefit to, to Becky and to the filmmakers so that it flows through to you. That's the way it was originally envisioned because that's what we had to do to get the capital released to get it spent. So now we're, we're to the point where we've got a sustainable product and that it's a high desirability. So we're saying, great, now we can turn that around to you guys and, and give the benefit more directly to you to, to, to broaden that infrastructure base so that uh, uh, we can sustain the program, lower the, uh, the benefit, but it, it 
again, it's that, that case of, hey, if it's all here in the first place, and you don't need to incur the cost of driving the gear from Chicago or New York, uh, well, then you don't need the big bet. From a skilled perspective, Becky <coughs> highlighted a number of areas, like grips and lighting. Yeah. From a resource and infrastructure perspective, where, where do you see gaps? <coughs> 